Pueblo Salmon. And that work includes streamwood management, riparian corridor protection policy, and juvenile steelhead monitoring. She has a master's degree in conservation biology with a focus on stream and river ecosystems, and she's worked in the field of watershed protection for almost 30 years. Kristen's title, uh, talk is titled A Riparian Conservation Strategy for the San Lorenzo Watershed. This is our last presentation before break. Let's give Kristen a big hand. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm happy to talk to you today about a riparian conservation strategy for the San Lorenzo River watershed. In today's talk, I'm going to describe what the San Lorenzo 2025 partnership is, then I'm going to go over a definition and status of riparian corridors, and then I'll do an overview of the riparian conservation program. So the San Lorenzo River 2025 is a collaborative effort focused on addressing the risks facing the San Lorenzo River over the next 10 years. And it has four focus areas, and riparian corridors really cover these first three, habitat restoration and watershed protection, flood protection, and community river trails and places. This is a list of the program partners. Um, we have the Santa Cruz Water Department, the RCD, the County, Coastal Watershed Council, and the San Lorenzo Valley Water Agency. We also have project partners that have helped with specific pieces of the program, including Conservation Collaborative that have helped develop the framework for the plan, um, Central Coast Wetlands Group, Watershed Stewards Program, and the Valley Women's Club. So what is a riparian corridor? Riparian corridor refers to that band of habitat along a river, a stream, or a lake that supports a plant community that's adapted to wet and occasional flooding conditions. And the trees are, you know, familiar trees. It includes the willows, alders, sycamores, and cottonwoods. Then you can have a shrub layer that has, you know, hazelnut, snowberry, elk clover. And then there's an understory, like ferns and horsetail. And then in turn, that plant community provides wildlife habitat and the riparian corridor is really intrinsically linked to the stream ecosystem. And that's why folks who are interested in steelhead and coho conservation are also really interested in riparian conservation. This slide shows a riparian, some of the best riparian habitat in the San Lorenzo Valley in Upper Zianni Creek. And you can really see, you know, it covers all the banks, um, it's really wide. And sometimes in Santa Cruz, we also get what I call redwood riparian. Redwood trees, of course, can grow higher up on the slopes, but they really like streamside areas, and they can be the dominant riparian um, plant in a lot of our smaller tributaries. Riparian corridors are really cool because they provide just a multitude of benefits, not only for wildlife, for the stream ecosystem and fish, and also for humans. So they protect water quality by filtering out sediments and pollutants. They're a source of nutrients for the stream wood, all the small leaves and things that fall in. They're really important insect habitat. They're not only, they are the reproductive habitat for aquatic insects that steelhead and coho feed on, and they're also a source of terrestrial insects that fall into the stream. Uh, roots stabilize the banks that prevent a lot of sedimentation. Uh, you have the trees providing shade that keeps water cool, that supports these cold water fisheries. It's the source for stream wood that helps build the stream habitat. Uh, it's wildlife habitat, migration corridors, you know, a lot of our larger animals, you know, mountain lions, foxes use riparian corridors to get around. They also provide flood storage and they're natural areas for enjoyment. Within the county of Santa Cruz, we have a riparian corridor and wetlands protection ordinance that was passed in 1978, which is 40 years ago. And it's a complex ordinance, but I'm going to focus on its protection of perennial streams. And it, the ordinance protects the stream itself and 50 feet from this mean bankful season flow line. It also will protect areas of riparian woodland, um, that plant community, when it's present. 
And all these areas are protected from development activities, which of course includes building, clearing, grading, uh, <coughs> removal of trees and shrubs, and dumping of debris. However, there is a lot of cabins and homes that were built before 1978, especially in the San Lorenzo Valley, where the history was that it was developed as sort of a summertime place. And so we have these streams with a lot of these, you know, historic homes that are actually within this protected riparian corridor. So you get situations that look like this when you have really pretty intense development really close to the stream. And then we also get situations like this where maybe the home isn't within that initial 50 feet of protected area, but it probably was within the riparian woodland when it was constructed. And, and then you have a yard or some kind of developed or cleared area. And it's properties like this that have really, um, that there's been a community and an agency staff perception that, you know, the ordinance doesn't look like it's working really well because you have a lot of properties like this. And it really goes back to that historic residential development. And it's really this situation that has been driving the creation of this riparian conservation program. So we have the San Lorenzo River Conser Riparian Conservation Program. Um, and again, this has been in development a long time. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room um, who collectively have seen riparian corridor condition decline over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years if you've been here since 1978. And it's really that, there's been a lot of interest um, among all of the program partners over the last six to eight years to really try to figure out how do we address this? Um, what can we do to better protect and enhance riparian corridors uh, within the San Lorenzo River Valley? So the program includes four activity areas, and so I'll go through those activity areas. The first one is existing conditions, data, and monitoring. We've actually made some great progress in this area over the last five years. Uh, one of our project partners, the Central Coast Wetlands Group, um, has partnered with the county and really taken the lead to develop what's called a RIP grant. So this is a riparian rapid assessment method. And this is a way of going into an area and looking at that riparian corridor and saying, you know, what does it look like? Is, it, is there riparian vegetation along the banks? What kind of trees are there? Is there a variety of trees? Um, do you have this good structure where you have trees and shrubs and understory? Is there bank stabilization? And so you use this rapid assessment method where you look through different metrics and you're able to combine it and really tell a story of how, what the condition is of that riparian area. And this is a map of the San Lorenzo watershed, and these are all the areas that have already been assessed with the RIP ramp. Um, they're going to do three more areas this coming over the next six months. They'll do Fall Creek, 